As you guys are aware of by now, Shinobi Striker has launched the start of the new Legacy season in the game. It features a new battle pass with Six Pass Madara, who just released and today they confirmed our final two DLC for us, Jigen and Barrier Mode Naruto. Both of which had an incredibly hype fight in the new Boruto series and when I tell you I was at the edge of my seat, I was leaning a little bit sideways, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and with this latest update, they launched the renovation of the new Hidden Leaf Village, which I had to say looks amazing in its own right. It's about as large as the Cloud Village in size and the amount of buildings is incredible. To top it off for each of the game modes, the objectives have their placements randomized every time you get into a new game. Is that not cool or what? So basically what that means, each time you load into a base, A, B, and C can be at different locations each time. On Flag Battle, it's unchanging. However, the scrolls are all over the map. They will be at random spots. It's not just one linear fashion like it is for every other map. Man, this update is amazing and all, but the fact that they waited four years to do this is such a double-edged sword. And let me tell y'all why. Loyalty comes and goes when it comes to games, and this game is no exception. You'll stay on a game for a little bit of time, come back off and on. However, Shinobi Striker just has that feel to it that makes you want to play it. And the proof is in how long we've all been playing the game. I think most of us are going to reach our four year mark in August, and that's pretty crazy to give that much dedication to a game. Speaking of which, they put the game on PlayStation Plus for the month, so make sure you guys go ahead and check that out if you are a PlayStation Plus member. Only for this month though. For the most part, the patch notes weren't really anything to sneeze at, from the rebalancing to the adding new stuff, not really much. But there are a few things to note, such as them adding new fire prestigious there's a new hair and skin color the white skin color for Madara, all the way at the bottom right there and that's exciting in of itself because now there's three more slots available and they could potentially add like you know green red blue if anybody's actually into that stuff can make your character that skin color <laughs> They also added vertical jumping, which you can do by just holding the R2 button and it'll take you straight up. And I'm not gonna lie, it's taken a little bit for me to get used to it because as long as we've been playing the game, it's ingrained in your head that just holding R2 will move you forward. Now we move directly up sometimes instead, and this is really good for dodging and then coming straight back down to pop a jutsu or an ultimate on somebody, instead of just going forward or backwards all the time. Now back to the prestiges, these look really nice and all, but y'all have to really, really consider this. These are 21 through 25th prestige. Getting to 20th by itself is going to take you a break. So for those who want to look clean with their prestige, this will take you a long time. Trust me, coming from the person who played this game off and on and still plays it pretty frequently, it took me a minute to get to 20th prestige. <laughs> also, Bandai, please, I kid you not. Today, I have ran into at least three Infinite Tsukuyomi modders that are terrorizing the mess out of my games. Infinite Tsukuyomi itself is a really, really creative and good ultimate, but now that ultimate modders have it in their hands, you don't even have a chance to win the game anymore. Anymore. So with that in mind, please, like I said before, make it happen with that build check. All right, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you guys go ahead and drop a like, comment, and sub down below, letting me know what you guys thought of this update. But like usual, you guys have a wonderful day and stay safe.